twali tuli awo nga twakamala okuzika nga tukomewe waka because twazika mchalo baita yo mayuge nga DMO that is the district medical officer wajinja district na jana na abasawo ne double cabin ne ba ne ba tugamba batwala mu quarantine it was a tough time because nga tula abantu twala mu bintu bintu tutategera first and foremost echata mama tuchimanyi eh, yafa pneumonia she died of pneumonia that was on acute stage nga ali manageable so kati ba tugamba tafu de covid tugena okumaliriza nga betuli mu bili so confusing this is apostle julius his mother died of acute pneumonia which was misdiagnosed as covid-19 a mistake that would soon come back to haunt him but 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 kwa tau but kuma ne police yajja but twala nga bayekera ne batwala sample ya soka sample ya soka bebaji twala ne danga tuli negative after like 7 days they took another sample na yone nebula yote yadda na kudda actually batu gama anti yebuze sample za bula The Ministry of Health would like to inform the general public that Uganda has confirmed her first case of coronavirus disease, COVID-19. The Uganda government immediately enacted stringent measures to curb the spread of the virus, from shutting down all of the country's border points to enacting a 24-hour curfew. And by amending the Public Health Act, Government and Ministry of Health expanded the search powers of health workers, allowing them to make arbitrary visits to any premises suspected of having COVID-19 patients. Government looks at the majority, protecting the bigger picture, the majority, the many, so that we have uh, some lives uh, tomorrow. And in that, some of the measures may, to some extent, hinder or infringe on your freedoms. At the beginning, they would come and, and do tests every two weeks the ministry. Like the very first time, we had a few people who were positive, and that time it was the time the stigma was very high. They would collect you from your home. Well, like the whole village now doesn't want to talk to me, because they saw me being taken in an ambulance. State actors and private entities have collected, processed, and shared personal data, including sensitive health data, in breach of the data protection principles and safeguards in the national data protection laws. Yes, information was created, was, was collected, even when it was necessary. Challenge is, there, there are no regulations to, to, to regulate the use of the data and collection of the data. We don't have um, enough data protection for the end user. This is partly because the health workers involved in, in, in this COVID intervention do not have enough awareness on, on, on data protection. So in this situation, uh, health workers have been moving around trying to trace COVID contacts, but also they've been collecting information which has been personal and intrusive in nature. Take the example of Apostle Julius, whose unconscious mother had her COVID swab taken without anyone's consent. Uh, wakaita ondo za emiezi nga esatu kuena buchamfiru wa mama wa manzara. Uh, Yaluwala, uluna kuluwali luwa mukaga ni mutu wale nsambia. Katibu wa maro kufa, tutu kechisera, tutu wala tuzika. Tu, ya faku sande, tutu muzika ku Tuesday. On Friday, on Friday morning, neba netufu ne simunga eva mu Ministry of Elefe. Batu kubira, batu kubira nze kenyeni because it is me who took the patient in Zambia. It, the patient was under my supervision. Kati, ne batu gamba anti ya fa COVID. Batu gamba anti ya fa COVID, ne mbabu uza muamu jako sampo yona, elaganti ya food de COVID. Ne, ne bangamba sampo baji taking it amu intensive care. Ne mbagaba, that is wrong. Umurado yali wange. You cannot do any test without my consent. This unsupervised collection of data during the first year of the pandemic revealed gaps in the enforcement of data protection laws in Uganda. I called a border guy in Wendegea and I'm like, go to this hospital. At this time, they're reading results. Pick for me my results. And he picked the results. When he got to me, first thing he told me, Zanka, like, ah, you're fine. He already knew. He already knew. No, but the thing is, they didn't check it. They didn't the check it. They should owner. give them to the owner. Yes. You won't be shocked a few days from now if you go to buy a Rolex and you find it wrapped in a COVID result slip of someone. 
because someone has found their HIV results before. It's one thing to lobby for more laws, but even the, the few laws we have, we don't implement them or enforce them. For the case of Uganda, NITA is the custodian. It's the custodian of data protection. And under the, the legal framework, they are mandated to manage any conflicts or handle any incidents of data breaches. Like in most countries, Uganda used contact tracing applications to curb the spread of the pandemic, even though the Ministry of Health itself denies having actively used these applications. We have really deployed a number of, of applications, but uh, for contact tracing, we have rather uh, not developed so fast in that area. There are some digital technologies they use uh, to, to verify whether your COVID tests are in, uh, are in order, whether you're negative or positive, and they keep track of these people who are entering inside and outside the country. Most people were asking questions, what happens with the user information that they're collecting? Is it personal in nature? Is it generic in nature? What are the safeguards? Who gets to keep this information and how, how do I give my consent? What are, what are the qualifications for this consent? So these are some of the key issues. In 2010, Uganda enacted into law the Regulation of Interception of Communications Act. Now that legitimately gives government the powers to snoop on you. As expected, the most immediate victim of this act was the individual's freedom of expression. I made a video on Facebook. There is no privacy. If I don't stop talking, With the directives of uh, UCC, yeah, for all the other communicators to, 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 to register with them, those infringe them more on the freedom of expression. Those directives were passed last year in October 7th, and they required whoever has big numbers on social media, you go and register with them before you do anything else. So if they have interest, on you, interest with you, they can easily come for you and block you and do all those funny things. So what becomes of the people whose freedoms had been infringed upon? What available recourse do citizens have as they wait for the data protection laws to catch up? In case you suffer, rather a data breach as a, as a, as a person, you can report that breach one to the regulatory authority. Uh, government should speed up on the regulations. It's a new phenomenon. Everyone is still struggling to understand what their rights are, what their obligations are. For the data subjects or citizens, do you know who has your data? Are you aware of the technology you're using? Do the health officials act in public interest? And, and intervene and try to curb the spread of the pandemic, but also at the same time, do they have the capability to protect the user's data? Or if they breach the user's data, what are the implications? Who holds them accountable?